Hi, I'm Teresa and welcome to my channel. Today I've got a very exciting video because I am talking about One Last Stop by Casey McKiston. So I got sent this arc through Melia and I'm so grateful, so so very grateful. I adore Red, White and Royal Blue, it's one of my favourites of all time. And so when I heard that Casey McKiston was writing another book, and not just any other book, an FF book, I was mind blown. Because, you know, if you spent any time on my channel, you know that I quite like FF books. And, oh, oh yes. And just spoiler alert for this review, this book is incredible and I will be gushing about it. So yeah, this is going to be just a quite a casual review discussion, very one-sided discussion. And just me generally gushing about it. It's going to be completely spoiler free. And I've kind of separated this into a few parts. So we're going to do... Just a bit of an introduction to the book, the synopsis, I'm going to talk about the characters and their relationships, the writing, the themes, and then just overall my thoughts. So the kind of tagline almost I'd give this book is it's an FF time slip rom-com following a cynical main character trying to get by in a new city and her subway crush who has been displaced from the 70s and ended up stuck on the subway. So we follow a main character called August as she moves to a new city. She moved to New York to finish her degree and so she's looking for a place to stay, a place to work, very normal people stuff. And she ends up moving into this apartment and we meet her roommates and I love her roommates, they're so cool. <laughs> and she gets a job at a local diner called Billy's Pancakes. It's like Billy's Pancakes, House of Pancakes, it's a very strange name. And so she has to get a subway to go to a class and on the subway she has a meet cute, she encounters this girl who's like this butch, punk, angel. And then, you know, she has like a subway crush. She meets her, she like falls in love for a second and then she gets off the subway and that's it, she's never going to see her again. Except this girl is always on the subway when August gets on. And so they begin to strike up a relationship and we learn that her name is Jane and that she is stuck on the subway, she cannot leave and that she's been displaced from the 70s. So moving on to characters, the characters are the strong point of this book and I've read White and Royal Blue as well. I think that's really where Casey McKiston's talent shines through is creating these incredibly authentic, real characters and it's something I absolutely adore in their work. So in One Last Stop you've got your main character August as I've mentioned and she's, I think she's described by her roommate Myla as a reformed girl detective and like that's perfect. That's exactly what she is. She loves these mysteries and research and solving cases and she's very cynical, she's very determined, She's, she's got this dry humour and I love it and she's also got this need to help others and that's where this solving cases and mysteries idea comes in because she meets Jane and Jane is an enigma and she's the perfect case for August to solve. There's a line and I'm just going to read it. She can't believe Jane had the nerve, the audacity to become the one thing August can't resist, a mystery. And that's very much the basis for the beginning of their relationship, for going beyond you know, acquaintances that kind of flirt a bit on the subway is trying to solve this mystery of how Jane got onto the subway and also how come she remembers nothing of her life and trying to rebuild that as well. And so that brings us on to Jane, who I love, 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 love. <laughs> Jane, oh, she's so cool. She's this gritty lesbian punk from the 70s. You know, she was she's a radical. She was at all the protests, the riots. She wasn't afraid to get violent. And she, from being very heavily involved in the queer scene in the 70s, she suffered a lot. It wasn't always a very happy time. And there's, I loved this part of her character so, so, so much. And I also loved that she's, she's just so positive and hopeful and loving. It's never portrayed like one of these aspects of her personality is more important than the other. And I just loved how they came together to make Jane Jane. She's a type to have an impromptu dance party on the subway when it breaks down and then have the entire car dancing because she's just got this infectious energy and I really really adored that. And I have many a quote about Jane to be honest and I'm not going to force you to hear them all. I will leave some for when you actually read the book. 
I think this quote describes Jane absolutely to a T, perfectly. I love it. August takes note after note and finds it almost funny. That all the fighting only conspired to make Jane gentle. Fearsome and flirty and full of bad jokes, an incorrigible sweet tooth and a steel toe boot as a last resort. And I think that just shows these like two parts of Jane so well. And oh god, I love her so much. I have fallen in love with her just as much as August has. So I want to talk about in this video also about some of the side characters. So I've mentioned August's roommates and I love them. So we've got Nico, who is a trans Latino psychic. <laughs> he is very cool. I love him so much. And oh, he's just great. You've also got Myla, who is dating Nico. She's this queer black girl. And she's also very, very cool. You've got Wes, who's a bit of a mystery. He works nights, so you don't really see him. But he's got a poodle called Doodle. And he's quite sullen and mysterious. And I also really like him. Um, I believe he is gay. He's definitely attracted to men. And altogether, this apartment is just, it's weird. <laughs> and it's so arty. You know, Wes, is, he's a tattooer, tattoo artist. And Myla does art, and but she's got like some kind of electrical degree. And Nico's obviously a psychic. And it's this such a strange blend, but this perfect queer found family and the love and support they have for each other and this understanding and I just love them so 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 much. Um, you also got a few other characters, I'm not going to go into detail on them, but you've got a couple of drag queens. Drag plays quite an important role in this book and I also adore that. The majority of your main cast of characters, they're like all queer. <laughs> it's amazing. So in terms of romance, I adored this. This is obviously, it's a rom-com so it's the main focus of the book really and oh it's done so well. They're so, their relationship is so tender and they're so perfect for each other and it just, it's so entwined with the uncovering of Jane's memories and solving the case and I thought that just with that it developed so perfectly and there's so much good flirting and pining leading up and oh I loved it so much it was just a complete joy to read they have so many sweet moments or just moments i wanted to keep forever in my heart just cute things they do even if you know they're limited to being on the subway they still manage to have all these lovely moments i will also say that um <laughs> the people who find red white and royal blue too graphic honey you've got a big storm coming this book very much does have sexy scenes and <laughs> they're so well written, they're so good. And yeah, I felt they never felt like they were just added in to have that in, you know, to have a sex scene. It felt very organic and very much part of the relationship and a necessary thing to include. Like, you know, it's the natural path to follow. And I really, really just enjoyed their relationship so, 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 so much. They really are just so perfect together. They fit so well. So next I want to talk about the writing. So as I mentioned earlier, Casey McKiston's strength is creating these really authentic, really real characters. And I feel like that comes through in the writing so well. Like for example, the humour and the conversations between the characters, they feel so natural, so real. And honestly, it's like you're reading about real people, you're taking a look into these real people's lives. You know, they've got inside jokes, they tease each other and it's just, it's so real and I love that so 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 much. It's so, it's such an important skill in the book and it's one that Casey has completely mastered and I love it an awful lot. I felt like it also very much came through in August's narration. The narration of the book felt like a 23 year old was was narrating it you know like the way things are described it wasn't these over-the-top flurry descriptions it was often relying on like memes or gay yearning or like pop culture references but done so well so organically that it never felt forced or over the top and there were moments of profoundness within this you'd have these absolutely gorgeous beautiful lines these lines that really hit home I was like oh yeah that's that's a my that's my experience right there you've got on page and 
oh it was gorgeous but then they'd be followed by a dick joke <laughs> and like I love that balance so much it felt so authentic it felt like that's how you talk you know 23 year olds aren't going around saying all these profound things all the time it's just such a talent to capture that and to have it so ingrained in the book and the characters themselves and in the writing and oh so good and next I want to talk about a few themes so I've got three I want to talk about I've got New York which is the setting queerness and loneliness so a fun mix so this book is set in New York and I'm not a New Yorker if you can't tell I am born and raised in rural Scotland I'm not a city slicker you would call me up here a chukter <laughs> like I am not a city person but and I am certainly not a New York City person but from my understanding of New York from the way this book read this felt like a very very authentic once again portrayal of New York the city it was like one of the characters it was just as alive and real and developed and I loved how Casey presented the vibrant communities the mix of cultures of the city and the history of the city through Jane you also see this very subtle magic the kind of way reality bends around the city and there's obviously Jane and how she got there but there's a few other just slight instances I just really really enjoyed seeing that I just really love this portrayal of the city and the massive role it played you don't really think very much about a setting of a book in terms of your enjoyment but the the way the setting was portrayed in this book was so incredible so in portraying this real New York City in case he hasn't just done you know the, it's like magic the wonderful diverse people of the city We've also got the subway rats, the subway breaking down, <laughs> the horrible shitty apartments, you know, it's not romanticised like that. Like you've got a very cynical main character, very pessimistic, and that comes through in the narration in terms of the tone of the book. And so the characters, the setting, nothing is romanticised to that extent. And that's another thing I just really loved and another point for the writing and another theme is queerness, queer identity, queer community and this was very obviously a very important part of this book for the author the dedication is for queer communities past, present and future and so it's set up from the very beginning that this is going to be a large part of the book and so we explore queer life in the past through Jane who's displaced from the 70s and who lived as as openly as you could as a lesbian at that time very very heavily involved in the community and through her we see so much of the good times and so much of the bad times you know Casey McKiston depicts both and you don't it's not romanticized as I said you see the bad but also it's not all negative this book has very much got a message of hope and so you see the positives and then you see the comparison with how queerness exists in the present with all these openly queer characters and the celebration of queer identity and it's really just very beautiful and it's just as a whole very moving it's handled so sensitively but without shying away from the reality and the grittiness and the truth and yeah once again like with setting queerness played such an integral role in the story I just really really enjoyed reading that so the third theme I want to talk about it sounds a bit depressing but it's loneliness so August is lonely you know like let's set this up with a quote from chapter one truth is when you spend your whole life alone it's incredibly appealing to move somewhere big enough to get lost in where being alone looks like a choice and so from this you can really see a lot of August's character she she's lonely and she's quite almost content being alone it doesn't bother her as such she's moving somewhere where she can get lost and stay lost and a lot of this book deals with the loneliness you can feel growing up and becoming an adult and having not found your community your people your place what you want to do and how it can feel when everyone around you is and that just really resonated with me a lot and it's one of my favorite parts of the books this putting this really isolating feeling on page and having 
this book tell you that no you're not alone other people feel this and that really meant a lot that was something I really enjoyed and so it isn't depressing or <laughs> or sad to read about you know like yes it tackles loneliness but it's got such a message of hope you know August finds her people you've got this wonderful queer fine family and you've got Jane. This book has such an important message of finding community and of hope and of the importance of community and I really really appreciated that message. So the last little bit I wanted to do was a bit of a comparison almost with the red, white and royal blue. So I'm gonna say straight up you know I can't pick a favourite or or anything like that say one is better than the other because they are very very different books and although they have their similar similarities and differences they are both very very strong individual books and I really just adored them both I adore Casey McKiston as a writer I think they've become a complete autoboy author for me and so in terms of similarities August and Alex are quite similar they both when they have something that they're working on they're so consumed by it there's nothing else like Alex and the campaign trail and August and solving Jane's case you know everything else ceases to exist they have their focus and they're very just determined within that. Red, White and Royal Blue also has this message of hope this queer cast exploration of queer identity though to a lesser extent than one last stop and you know you've got Casey McKiston's same really authentic characters, lively characters, really natural humour and conversations that I adored in this book is what I also really adored when I first read Red, White and Royal Blue but they're also very different in terms of plot, of tone, of setting, of the relationship. They are very very different books. Red, White and Royal Blue had this really high stakes you know with two major worldwide figures, international figures in relationships it was very high stakes you had the election but with one last stop it's shrunk right down there's very very few people that care even if it is Jane's whole life you know only really August and Jane and August's friends know about that, that situation and so it's such smaller stakes and more personal meanings and I really really enjoyed that in terms of tone, as far as I can remember, Red, White and Royal Blue has a much more positive tone. It is, you know, full of humour. It is really upbeat, really hopeful. And One Last Stop is not by any means depressing or sad, but you do have this more cynical narrator and that kind of falls through in the tone a bit but you still got you know the message of hope I've been talking about and so it does it's not a depressing book by any means but it's just less upbeat we could say but yeah just to conclude a bit my thoughts I know this has been maybe been a bit all over the place but overall this book is fantastic it's a book that I will be rereading and I can see it being quite a regular thing particularly when I'm feeling this loneliness that August feels really struggling with what to do you know she's a couple years older than me but I imagine once I get to the point where I am also getting ready to leave uni and enter into the big wide world and have to figure out what to do I'm also going to be like right time to just read this and chill out and have some hope about what on earth I'm going to do just this fantastic nuanced exploration of queer identity and all these big things set against a backdrop of New York and of queer found fam and shenanigans and just being in your early 20s and being able to just run around and have fun and also just this gorgeous beautiful romance and these characters are so real so authentic it is so unreal yeah so I've probably gushed about this enough by now I was wanting to keep this video short but I do not think I have so I'm just gonna end this here so I have got a review on Goodreads and I'll link that down below and it's probably just a bit more cohesive and more focused on the book itself rather than my feelings if that makes sense. You've also got some more quotes there if you want some more teasers. If you've enjoyed this please consider leaving a like and a comment, uh, subscribing if you haven't already. It really just means the world, it helps out so much and I love getting comments and sitting and replying to them all. And yeah if you want to keep up with me elsewhere I've got my social media link below. 
So thank you for watching and I will see you with another video soon.